Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the concept of market equilibrium. In order to understand market equilibrium, we have to revisit the law of supply and demand briefly, what we covered in the prior two sessions. The law of demand, what does that state? Well, if the price of something goes up, if the prices of something goes up, what's going to happen if the prices go up, we are going to demand less of it. The demanded quantity is less. So prices up, demand down. And if the prices of something that we we want to buy is down, well, if the prices is down, the quantity demanded is up. Notice it's an inverse relationship between price and demand. In the prior session, we also looked at change in quantity demanded, which is the changes along this line due to prices. Then we discuss the change in demand where the line where, this, where the demand curve line shifts to the right or shifts to the left. Then we discuss the law of supply. Basically state, if the price of something is down, if the price of our product that we are providing, if the prices are down, we have no incentive to supply. Therefore, the supplied quantity, so if the prices are down, the supplied quantity are down. If the prices are up, if somehow now suddenly there's more demand, if the prices are up for our for what we are providing, if the prices are up, we are willing to supply, produce more of the quantity, more of the quantity. Simply put, this is a positive relationship between price and supply. Now, also, we discussed the change in quantity, su quantity supplied, the change in quantity supplied, which is the change along the supply curve change along the supply curve due to changes in prices then we discuss a change in supply where the supply line shifts to the right which is ex supplying more or shift to the left in this session in the market equilibrium we are going to be combining both the supply and demand supply and demand on the same graph let's go ahead and start our discussion before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So what's market equilibrium? Market equilibri equilibrium is a state of balance or stability in a market where quantity demanded, what's demanded by the consumers, what we want, matches the quantity supply by the producers, by the, by the sellers. So the forces of supply and demand intersect. Well, let me show you real quick on this graph. What does that mean? Remember, we are selling we are selling pizzas. So someone is buying and someone is selling. So this is the price and this is the quantity and the supply, the supply line here and the demand curve is here. And they intersect right at this point, right at this point. Let's see where do they intersect. They intersect at three dollars per, per slice of pizza supplying 7,000 slices per semester. What does that mean? It means if the pizzerias on campus supply 7,000 slices of pizza and they sell them for $3, none of the supplies would be left. They would all be sold. Why? Because this is the equilibrium. 7,000 for $3 per slice, the consumers are willing to consume 7,000 slices. For more, if, if the charge is more, they're going to consume less. So if the price is more and the producer produce 7,000, they're going to have what? They're going to have some leftover. They're going to have surplus. They're going to have surplus. If the price goes down to $2, what's going to happen is we're going to have a shortage and you only produce 7,000. We're going to have more demand because at $2, more people will buy. But at $3, we will clear sell everything. So on a competitive market, prices and quantities are determined through the interaction of buyers and sellers. So we say this is the equilibrium, equilibrium for the supply and demand. Now let's take a look at the graph once again and just make some few more comments before we dig into shifting the line 
right or uh, shifting the supply line right or left, shifting the demand line right or left. So at this point, at three dollars and seven thousand slices, there's no excess demand. No one wants more pizzas. If it's three dollars, enough people to to consume the seven thousand notice. Quantity demand at seven thousand. Quantity supplied seven thousand. This is the graph for this data. This is for the demand. This is the demand data, and this is the supply data. So at this point, we are happy. 7,000 slices will make the producer happy because they can sell every single slice and the, the students, the consumers will buy every single slice and everyone is happy. There is no excess demand and no excess supply. The pizzerias don't have any slices to throw away and the students don't need any more. Buyers are willing to purchase the available quantity at the prevailing price and sellers are willing to sell the quantity at the demanded price. We will sell all the slices. If we are a producer and we're producing in total 7,000, every single slice will be sold. No, no, no shortage, no surplus. And you're going to see why I keep emphasizing this word shortage and surplus. So the equilibrium price is also referred to as the clearing mar market clearing price. It means it's going to clear all the product based on this price. You will not have any product left because the price and the quantity are the perfect combination. In a sense, that's how much consumers want to consume. This is how much the producer will produce and everything will be sold. No surplus, no shortage. Okay. Now, we have to understand the real world is more dynamic. People are organic. People are unpredictable. Sometimes what they want, they want to consume more of the pizza. Sometimes want to consume less of the pizza. So, so, so this is the equilibrium in theory. But sometimes what happened? Maybe you know somehow everybody wants to buy pizza. The demand curve will shift to the right, or suddenly nobody wants to buy pizza. The demand curve will shift to the left. Maybe some of the pizzerias they find out, you know what? We're not making a lot of money. We're gonna we're gonna exit the pizzeria business on campus. We have less supply. Sometime you're gonna have more businesses opening on campus because everybody is buying pizza, you're going to have more supply. So the market is dynamic. So we have to understand because if the market is dynamic, it, it will create shortage and surpluses at some point in time. So we have to understand what could create a shortage, what could create a surplus that moves this equil equilibrium line to shifting right, left, up, down. So market equilibrium is a dynamic concept, means it keeps changing. And due to various factors, what are the various factors? You could have a shift in consumer preference, where we like more pizzas or we don't like more pizzas. Changes in technology. We can produce more pizzas faster at a cheaper rate. Or now it's costing us more to produce the pizza. Input cost is going higher. Like, for example, the sauce, the cheese, the dough, if they go up in prices. We could have shift in government policies. The government may, might want to tax pizzas. Why? Because it's not healthy. Or the government wants to... Uh, uh, encourage uh, pizzerias to sell pizza so they give them some sort of a subsidies you buy the cheese they, the government will subsidize 20 percent of it so those and other factors will shift the supply curve and the demand curve up and down right and left however in a well-functioning market the forces of supply and demand will go back and will meet at equilibrium okay so if, if this is shift up you know the, the supply line will meet it so on and so forth, and the other one shift down. So let's start by discussing what could create excess supply or surplus. Surplus. So when do we have a surplus? Is when we have more supply, more supply than what's demanded. One is increase in the production. Suddenly, if productions of anything ramped up, okay, without corresponding increase in demand, what could be a good example? Let's assume we have technological advancement in agriculture product. Leads to a higher apple yields. Now we can we can produce more apples. So if farmers increase their yield, increase their production significantly, but you don't have more demand. The demand is the same, just the technology increased the supply. What's going to happen? You're going to have a surplus. Let me ask you this. If this happened, what do you think is going to happen to the price of apples? The price of apple will drop because the producers, they want to sell that excess, that surplus. Okay, so the price will go, the price will go down. They will have to lower their prices to get rid of the surplus. Decrease in demand. Suddenly, nobody wants to buy pizzas. Nobody wants to buy apple. This happened due to change in consumer preference. Maybe there's an economic downturn. People are eating home. They're not buying pizzas. Or the availability of a cheaper substitute. So people don't want pizzas. They can buy burgers and it's cheaper for them. Okay. For example, if there's a sudden decrease in the popularity of a particular fashion trend, clothing manufacturers may find themselves with excess inventory. So what happened uh, during the spring, um, you know, there was certain fashion that's, you know, 
in demand. So all the manufacturers, they started to produce this. By the time they're done producing it, shipping it from China, you know, midsummer, late summer, no one's interested in that fashion. They will have access inventory. Retailers will have access inventory. So that could happen. Decrease in demand. Also, what could create surplus is something called we called price floors. Now I put the price floors as a separate, as a separate slide to kind of emphasize the importance of it because price floors are usually set by government. Price floor, floors are usually set by government. What is a price floor? It's a price above the equilibrium level. So if you have equilibrium, if this is the equilibrium, the equip the price. If this is again, this is the price. And this is the quantity. If this is the price now, if this is the original equi equilibrium, the government will set a floor, a price that's higher than the equilibrium. What would happen? This situation occur when there are government imposed price floors, when or when suppliers overestimate the overestimate the demand, where the suppliers cannot produce more. They think it, they're going to have a lot of demand. They overproduce and they have more. So, a government floor will create a surplus. A government floor will create a surplus. How? Let's assume, let me just give you an example. The government sets a minimum price for wheat, okay? Let's assume the market price is per bushel is $5, and the government says, no, you cannot sell it for less than $7. Well, what's going to happen is this. Since it's more, since you can sell it for more than 5 which is more than the market equilibrium, since it's imposed by the government, what's going to happen? The producers of wheat, they're going to produce as much as they can because the minimum they can sell it at seven or whatever they produce, they can sell it at seven minimum, but the price should be five. So what's going to happen? No one's going to buy it. People's going to find, try to find the black market or, or avoid buying it because it's more than what normal forces, supply and demand will suggest. Therefore, under those circumstances, we'll have a surplus so when the government intervene they might create a surplus when they set a floor for a price what could also create a surplus well seasonal fluctuations some goods have seasonal demand okay so if the supplier don't adjust their production and they keep producing all year long on the same rate it will create a surplus for example during the holiday season toy manufacturers may increase production to meet expected high demand that's fine however or if the demand, let's assume they, you know, during the season, they think, you know, they're going to sell a lot. The demand turns out to be lower than anticipated or they kept producing at the same level. They will have excess supply. What happened when you have excess supply? Come on, guys, you guys, old shoppers, you go to the stores. What happened after the holidays? If they cannot sell something, they put it on sale. Why? Because we have excess supply. They have to lower the price, lower the price. Another reason could be international trade factors change in international trade policies or shift in global supply chain can also lead to access supplies. For example, if a country imposes tariff, tariff on imported goods, what does that mean? It means they don't want to, they don't want you, for example, in the US, they don't want us to buy a European product. Okay. Domestic producers, what they would do, they will increase production to meet the expected decrease in foreign competition because there's no competition. Well, what's going to happen is the domestic producer, let's assume wine or cheese, they will start to produce more. Well, if the if the production exceeds the demand, if the production does not meet the demand, if they, if they increase the supply much more, they will have excess of supply. That's another reason where you could have excess of supply. Let's take a look and see what the excess supply surplus would look like on a graph, just to kind of to see what it looks like. This is the original equilibrium. If the price is four dollars we are only willing to demand four thousand uh, four thousand slices however the producers are willing to produce ten thousand well we're going to have a surplus of six thousand what's going to happen because of the surplus we're going to have to lower our prices for the slices of pizza or whatever we are selling to get rid of the surplus or the demand has to increase either demand has to increase or we have to lower our price to kind of get rid of this surplus so if the market price is above the equilibrium price we have a surplus it creates a surplus so once again market price above the equilibrium this is the equilibrium and the market price is at four it created a surplus now producers find in this situation they will find difficult in selling their goods and services so they may reduce the price to encourage more buyers which eventually lead to a decrease in supply or an increase in demand or they'll have to cut down on their production moving the market back toward the equilibrium. 
So what's going to happen to get rid of the surplus? The supplier will stop producing, order lower their price, and hopefully demand will pick up. Together, we go back to the equilibrium. So let's talk about now about shortage or excess demand. When would that happen? When we have more demand for something than we can supply of it. There's a shortage of something. That's easy to understand. What could create a shortage? Well, an increase in consumer demand. Suddenly, there's a surge in consumer demand for a particular product. And there is not a corresponding increase in supply. Something somehow became fashionable out of nowhere. Or let's go back to COVID. During COVID, what happened to masks? We had a sudden increase. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a, consu yeah, it's a consumer demand, not in their taste, but there was a sudden increase in consumer demand for masks. There was not enough masks. If you wanted to buy masks, assuming you can find them, you'd have to pay four, five, six times the price of a regular when you buy them without the COVID situation. Okay, this could happen also during uh, changing consumer preferences, marketing campaign. Somehow uh, a company have a great marketing campaign or an industry like, you know, creating demand for eggs or milk, right? Or a positive shift in consumer income. Suddenly people have more money because of that. They, they create excess demand. And when you have an excess demand, you have more demand than supply. It's going to lead to a shortage. And what's going to happen when you have more demand than supply? Prices will go up. Remember the masks. If you want to find the mask, you can find it. You're going to have to pay extra. Okay. For example, if a new smartphone is released with advanced features and a popular advertising campaign, we're talking about Apple here, it might generate higher demand than the manufacturers initially anticipated. And this happens to, to Apple every time they release a new phone where there's not enough uh, there's always excess demand. There's a shortage. So you put your order and you have to wait a month or two to get your phone. That's what excess demand is. It's a shortage. Another example will be supply disruption. <laughs> and this will talk, we're here talking about COVID. An event that disrupts the supply of a product, which can lead to excess demand. Suddenly something happened. COVID, right? We cannot ship anything from China anymore. We cannot ship anything from the producer, uh, from the producer countries. We have, we have a shortage. We have a supply problem. And especially during COVID, what happened during COVID, supply went down and demand for many products went up because people wanted to do what? They wanted to buy as much as possible so they can hoard it, right? They, they want to keep it. Demand went up, supply went down. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a big problem. So prices go up. Supply disruptions can occur due to natural disasters, production issues, labor strikes, raw material shortages, or an event like COVID. You guessed it, like COVID. Okay. Also, what could create a, an, an, an excess shortage or supply disruption is if a major oil producing country experienced political instability. And this is common when we have some unrest in the Middle East. Okay, The oil supply are threatened, the oil supply route. And what happened is we have excess demand. We want more. We want to store more oil. We don't have it. We have a shortage. Prices of oil goes up. Another example from COVID is hand sanitizer shortage. <laughs> uh, one man from Tennessee, Matt Colvin, who was an Amazon seller, what he did, he stockpiles 18, almost 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizers and he was selling them at a premium. So what happened is that the Tennessee uh, intervened because they have rules against price gouging and they forced him to kind of lower their price. What he did, he eventually donated them to his church. But the point is, this is an example of where you have a shortage because of some event occurring. You have more than demand. So the demand for hand sanitizers went up. The, the demand went up. The supply stayed the same. It was the same. Now, eventually the supply catch up with the demand. But at that point early on during COVID, we had more demand for, than supply. And I'm sure if you remember those days, uh, you'll find hard time finding hand, sa hand sanitizers. Another reason for excess demand is price ceiling. Again, I have price ceiling on a separate recording to kind of to let you know that price ceiling usually occur when you have a government intervention. Price below the equilibrium. So the, the, here what the government is doing, if this is equilibrium, the government is setting the price below equilibrium. So this is price, this is quantity, this is P1, they will set the price at P2. When you have price at P2, you're gonna create excess demand. If the market price is set below the equilibrium, it would result in excess demand. This situation often occurs where a government imposed price ceiling or when suppliers also underestimate the demand. They don't and they don't and they don't they underestimate the demand for their product. So an example with this government price ceiling is when the government sets a maximum price for rental housing below equilibrium. So for example, let's assume in New York City, 
the fair market value of a rental property in Manhattan, just for the sake of illustration, is $5,000. But if the government sets a price below, let's assume the government sets a price at you know, $3,000, there is, you know, a price ceiling that you cannot charge more than 3000 and there's more demand because you cannot find enough apartments because if you're living in a $3,000 apartment, you're not going to move because the fair market value is five. What could that lead to is what's called the black market. Then people with this low rental, they will sublease it to someone else, maybe at 3500 They'll pay 3000 the new tenant paid them 3500 and they will pocket the 500 you will create what's called the black market but why did that happen because the government set a price ceiling why because the price is below the market everybody wants those units and everybody wants them there's not enough because the government sets, sets a price ceiling it create an access demand okay now if you're lucky to have the apartment the 3000 you're going to be happy say great price ceiling is the best thing that ever happened but if you want to rent in Manhattan and you cannot find well you'd say it's the price ceiling because I want it but I can afford to pay 5000 but there's not enough because the price ceiling people with lower capacity to pay to pay for it is able to it's basically against supply and demand it's it's forcing the market to create access demand because the government is lowering the prices again there's more demand than supply more demand than supply but this is like basically the government is forcing that by creating lower prices for something, it should they should let it go. Okay, so you would sublease your unit. What could also create excess demand? Again, I'm going over these examples to kind of help you understand in a multiple choice how you would answer multiple choice if this is creating an excess demand or an excess supply, shortage or surplus. Seasonal fluctuation, the same concept. Some goods experience seasonal variation in demand, and if suppliers do not adjust their production, it could result in excess demand, so they don't produce enough. During the holiday season, the demand for certain toys or electronics may exceed what's available in supply. So if the suppliers did not increase their supply it would lead to shortages and excess demand also anticipated prices changes if consumer expect the price of a product to increase in the future guess what they do they will go ahead buy and hoard let's assume the government says we are going to impose uh two dollar tax on cigarettes or on alcohol well if you drink alcohol or if you consume cigarettes what's going to happen they may say you know next three months we're going to do so you're going to go ahead and buy as much as possible now why because you want to get there before the additional taxes are added to your product, you will create excess demand, not enough supply. So consumer would rush to purchase the product at the current prices, leading to shortage. This happens also with goods like electronic devices or vehicles when consumer anticipate price hikes or changes in government regulation. So same concept with electron uh, talking about government regulation about electric vehicles like if you wanted to buy a tesla there was a tax credit of 7500 and that tax credit if you buy an electronic vehicle you can get a tax credit from the government for 1700 so every year the government will, was renewing this tax credit so every year the people by the end of the year before the government makes a decision to whether to re renew it or not would rush in to buy their car so they can get the 7500 in the following year the government would renew it but that ha this happened for several years. So you would see before a regulation changes, everyone rush rushes to get that extra credit for the from the government. And this is what the excess demand or shortage would look like on a supply and demand curve. So here what's going to happen, once again, we're setting a market price below. We're setting a price. This is the original equilibrium. E1, we're setting a price. So you know, it was a three below the market because we're setting a price below the market it's going to create a shortage it's going to create a a shortage why because the demand at, pri at the demand at two dollars is almost eleven thousand well, what's happening is this the demand at two dollars the demand at two dollars we can only have four therefore it's creating a surplus eleven minus four is seven thousand slices of pizza if we're talking about pizzas create this this is the shortage that it will create so if the market price is below the equilibrium market price market price is two which is set by the government is below the equilibrium it, it can create a situation with excess demand or what we know as shortage consumer demands more of what producers are willing to supply at that price because at two dollars they don't they're not going to give you eleven thousand okay they they don't they don't they're only willing to supply four thousand 
and the demand the true demand is 11,000 at that price but they they're not going to create a shortage leading to, and what happened is consumer demand more than what the producers are willing to supply at that price leading to competition among buyers and eventually what's going to happen if you let it go if the government don't intervene the prices will start to go up and we'll go back to equilibrium we'll go back to equilibrium as price increases suppliers are incentivized to increase production so as the prices goes up suppliers are willing to increase more as the prices goes up they're willing to increase more and if they find it at three dollars seven thousand is the you know that perfect equilibrium that they will stop and people will buy at three dollars the whole seven thousand dollar unit that's available now it's very important it's very important to know how to read graphs or how to use graphs in order to understand the questions and able to answer the questions. So I'm going to show you a few things about what would happen to shift in supply and demand. So I showed you what could shift supply and demand. What are the reasons could create an excess demand or an excess supply? Now I'm going to show you four different graphs of how to do this, how to be able to answer multiple choice questions. So on the Y axis, we always have the price on the X axis. We have the quantity. Here's what's going to happen. In this example, we're going to keep supply constant. And we're going to say the original demand is here. So the original equilibrium, we're going to call it, we're going to call this, this is line D1. So this is equilibrium one. So this is price one, P1 at quantity one, at Q, whoops, at Q1. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to increase the demand and see what happens and how to read this. So if they told you, somehow the demand for a product increase nothing happened we're keeping supply constant so so this is the, the demand curve i'm going to put the new curve the new d2 in a different color so notice we shift the demand curve d2 now here's what happened in d2 in d2 this is the equilibrium point two the price is p2 what happened when you have more the demand the price will go up okay now also we have q Q2. Now we don't know exactly how much Q will increase, but we know if we increase demand, the price will go up. So simply put, demand is up, price will go up. If we have more demand for something, what's going to happen? The producer will increase their prices because they know there's more de demand for that. Let's look at the second scenario. Again, what we're going to do, we're going to have, uh, let me use red pen. Let's keep it the same. It doesn't matter. Now we're going to also keep supply the same. Supply. Then, and we have supply. Let's just go back here. Supply. Demand. So this is the supply curve and this is the one. We're going to keep the, the supply is the same. So here we have the original equilibrium point. E1, Q1, P1. What's going to happen now rather than increasing demand we're going to be reducing demand. Now let me change colors here and we're going to shift the line to the left. So this is D2. So let's see what happened at D2. It crosses the supply line here at D2. If demand goes down, price goes down. If demand goes down, price goes down. Also the quantity is going to go down as well. Quantity will go down as well quantity what I mean by quantity quantity supplies because the suppliers will be willing to supply less but quantity if the demand less the price will be less the price will be less now let's do the let's work with rather than changing the demand let's change the supply so now we're gonna go ahead say this is the supply this is the demand now we're gonna keep the demand constant so this is s1 so this is the price and this is the quantity Oops, go back. Let's go back in. Let's go back in. Do this. This is the supply line. This is the demand. We're going to keep demand constant. We're going to have this is S1 price quantity. This is the original equilibrium. Now we're, we're going to change the supply. We're going to supply. We're going to supply less. We're going to supply less. Well, we're going to supply less. So if that's the case, we're oh let's let's supply more first. We're gonna supply more. So we're gonna shift to the right. We're gonna supply more. This is S2. At S2, we hit the demand curve here. What happened to the price? So this is ugh.
Now let's work with the supply curve. Let's assume we have um, the original is we have a demand line D and S1. So we're going to keep demand the same and we're going to change the supply. So this is the original E1 equilibrium one. This is P1. This is quantity one. Now we're going to increase the supply curve. We're going to increase the supply. We're going to shift the supply curve to the left S2. Now this is E2. E2. What happened? As we supply more, if there's more of something, the price of that something goes down. Okay. Now, if we supply more, obviously the quantity will go. We, we're supplying more. The quantity will go up, but we don't know by how much. But we know if the supply, when supply increases, the initial impression is prices will go down. And let's work the same scenario, keeping the demand the same. Now, we're going to have D is the same. We're going to have S1. So we're going to have the original equilibrium. This is P1, this is Q1, and this is E1. And now we're going to shift the supply curve to the left. We're going to shift, shift the supply curve to the left. This is S2. Well, so this is the new equilibrium. We're supplying less. We're supplying less. If we supply less, notice what's going to happen. The price will go up. The quantity obviously will go down because I'm telling you we're supplying less. But how's that going to affect the price? P2. So why am I showing you this? Because when you want to answer a multiple choice questions, please don't try to guess. Just sit down and say, if that happened, if this is what they're telling me happened, start with the original graph and say, is demand shifting to the right? Is demand shifting to the left? Right? Is supply shifting to the right? Is, su is supply shifting to the left? So don't try to guess anything. Try to use the graph. Okay? Let me show you here one more time. Same information, kind of basically summarizing it. If supply increases, well, without even telling you anything, what would what would happen if supply increases? If you have more of something, if you have more of something, generally speaking, everything else is equal, the price of that something should go down. And let's assume supply is increasing the, and the demand is decreasing. So it's both at the same time. So supply is going up. Okay, somehow producers are producing and they're not aware that people don't want their product. And this happens all the time. People misjudge, they produce something people don't want. What's going to happen to the equilibrium price? You guessed it, it's going to go down. What's going to happen to the quantity of the equilibrium? We really don't know. It all depends on the direction and the magnitude of that direction. How big that changes. So you don't know how much the quantity will change. You know, you know it's going to go up because it's telling you change it supplies up. We don't know. But for sure the price will decrease. Let's assume the supply goes down. We have less supply of something. What happened when we have less supply? Less supply, generally speaking. Less supply, well, we have a shortage. The price should pick up. It's not only that, we have more increase. Think about COVID. Think about masks, hand sanitizers. We don't have enough of them at the beginning and the supply wins throughout the roof. What happened to the prices? The prices increase. How much the quantity will go down by? We really don't know, depending on the magnitude and the direction. Supply went up and demand went up. Supply went up, demand went up. What happened to the price? I really don't know. It's unknown because I don't know the magnitude. That supply went up more than demand or demand more went up the supply. I don't know. And usually on the exam, they don't expect you to know. If you have a question like this, one of the answers will be undetermined and the answer choice is undetermined. I don't know what's going to happen to the price. To the quantity, of course it's going to increase. I'm telling you, the change in supply is up, therefore it will increase. Let's take a look at the last scenario. Change in supply goes down. We have less of something. What should usually happen? Price should go up. Well, yeah, but we have less demand. How about this? We have less of something, less of its demand. What's going to happen to the price? I really don't know because I need to know was the change in supply greater than the change in demand. So the price, I don't know. What about the quantity? It's like basically given to you. If you're telling me supply is down, therefore my quantity equilibrium will go down. I'm going to have less. Of course, I'm going to have less. I'm telling you the change in supply is a decrease. What should you do now? As a CPA candidate, go to Farhat Lectures, work MCQs, multiple choice questions. That's going to help you on your econ CPA exam section this is i mean supply and demand econ in general those are easy points on the exam if you understand them and this is what my this is my objective is to help you understand the concept so you will be ready for the exam day good luck study hard stay safe